We'll get your keys to victory here for Lisa Bluter's team and Jeff Denny's squad after the opening tip. One in control by Kansas State of the home whites. This is that agree they do have the advantage because this is a huge Iowa squad. They're just incredibly efficient and play well together as a unit. K-State's got to see a little bit more length, a little bit more size, and some three-point threats outside. Nice give and go. They score a ton of points, but they've allowed other teams to do that as well. But right now you can see they are locking down penetration lanes, forcing the beat to the center of the matchup for Shabbat's and working against Sonato again hits a driving Martin and Martin gets put four. And that's that cut in the read and understanding the offense. So now all over to the basket. Jalen Glenn has had a hot start this season. Drives as it knocked away from behind. Poked away. The other way we go. That was Warnock again who got her hand in there but knocked it away. Driving back down to Payne Sonato. And that's one of the things that Sonato does so well. We just mentioned it is the transition game. All five players run the floor. They look at the bucket. Sunday's hand. Score for the Bobcats. Second the Big 12 in scoring coming in. 22 points a game. Jalen Glenn, as you mentioned, part of the G force for Tim State. To Glenn today, the guarding Clark. Fatal dribble alive, allows the offense to come to work. One of the things, maybe as a freshman, a little bit last year as a sophomore, she could force a lot. But Caitlin Clark will just slice and dice you. She will make you pay for mistakes. Jamaxi makes her first try. Makes her second. Jamaxi so trying to get around inside on Sinondo. Clark will reset, settle it down. Screen for Clark goes up, tied up by Shabbat. Many of the case they mentioned didn't like it, but Clark, they're shaking through the game with somebody they were trying to ask for a comparison. Of course, the, the natural one is Sabrina Ayeski. Of course, I would have to run with you going both directions. But if you're Jeff Mitty and this Wildcat coaching staff, you have got to value those turnovers you generate, and you've got to be able to get possessions on the other end. Sonado, Over 1,500 career points, and she is the first player in men's or women's to reach that feat. Trophy case, and as Missy said earlier, she is certainly up for, or we'll see, if her, you would think Aaliyah Boston, that will be the two favorites for that award. Greer, the reverse layup, could not finish. K-State down only three or four now, despite five first half turn or first quarter turnovers. And another foul committed. As You've got to know they're going to go back door. They like to spread you out. You've got to be in help side defense. K-State averages about nine threes a game. You obviously want to pay mind to those three-point shooters. She's averaged about 26 minutes a game so far. She's a transfer from Central Michigan, and Lisa Bluter just sings her praises because it gives them another element that they didn't have last year. And a backup point guard. Doubled. Somehow threads the needle to find a teammate. And a missed shot by a falter. But a better defensive possession that time by the Wildcats, able to keep Clark contained and help. And you make Ever just working her way back from what has been an injury that has plagued her throughout the preseason. Glenn too tight gets called for. Ryan is this foul trouble can't plague them, and it's got to be with their guards, especially 40 to 50 feet away from the basket. Warlock makes both. Win at versus Wisconsin, 19 of 23. That was a big lift for their offense. You've got to find ways to get to the line that's aggressive. We haven't seen a lot of penetration yet by the Wildcats. Malcolm, the freshman tried to go baseline. Land to a cutting Sundell. Six for Sundell. Wrong. Take and finish and by Because these are veteran players. Four, five year seniors that Lisa Bluter has on this squad. And this is a unit that plays incredibly well together. Well, Warnock has really been not at the scoring level that I would have hoped for her early in the season, but averaging double figures coming in. Sudden down again, doing it herself. Put the ball out of her hands, allow her to move off the ball a bit. Marshall lines up a three. Iowa yet to hit a three pointer in the ball game. That leads by five. Riley Glenn lets it go. And hits! Looks and high percentage shots versus Wisconsin. Now That's a turnover. Moppin intercepts. She'll go all the way to the basket. Freshman scores the tie. And now this is where that momentum starts to pick up. This team's got to find that confidence factor. And you do that by little plays, runouts. And those are the big ones that they can. At the right time, but is able to finish on the other end. 
but then it was a foul at about 93. Twins with with fouls early in this first quarter, but their length and their defensive effort. Could he be down only two despite turning it over so many times? Well, Rodney this, Glenn left open, unable to hit. And a little bit of a different defensive look because you will see some zone from Iowa. They will mix it up a little bit. They played mostly man in that first half. They were exposed. The penetration got the best of them. But this is an Iowa team that they themselves... That is further going to not make Jeff happy, Jeff Mitty happy. And the Hawkeyes do a good job of keeping Gregory, the leading rebounder for the Cats, off the glass. Clark all the way coast to coast. Will not get the ball to go in. Takes another one, just trying to play one-on-one -on -one defense against Caitlin Clark, which is no easy task. With two fouls, Shamatsi, Sundell, and Briley Glenn as Clark makes both. Wildcats get bailed out, 20 on the reset for that shot clock. Gregory, double teamed. Posting up. Leaning in on her man, score it, and one! Finish it with the old-fashioned three-point play. So that's Gregory's first hoop, as you said. Hits the free throw. Wildcats a 76% free throw shooting team, and that ends when they've been a brief 5-0 run by Iowa. In transition, pull up three. Hammered by Marshall. Kingston, 3 of 11 from behind the yard. Clark, short one in the lane. And Riley Glenn tracks down the rebound. I think she'd love to have that one back, but she also had somebody open in the corner, but those are the looks that Kansas State's got to count. You've got to disrupt this Iowa offense. Get them off their game. Gregory against Sonano. Again! Gregory missed a lot of games last year at Oklahoma, suffered a vocal cord injury that just could not heal. Was not herself, but looking very much like the Gregory we saw that was... Not only a unanimous all big to a freshman team member a number of years ago, but averaged over 16 a game as a sophomore in Norman. Suddenly the gap is only one. Marshall, who hit a three last time down, able to get to the elbow and hit. Neither team has been efficient from behind the arc. Glenn steps inside the three-point line, misses another. Jalen Glenn is 0 of 5 from the field. Fast break opportunity the other way, and a lay-in finish. Hawkeyes have only hit one three out of eight. They are shooting 41%. Molly Davis left wide open. She'll bury the three. Ten rebounds and maybe five blocks a game. But the, everything on the offensive end and defensive end, Missy, ran through a yoga lead. It's, it's, uh, everything had to change because you no longer had that funnel to go inside to. Yeah, better execution on the offensive end. And I think the biggest factor, you don't have a rim protector. You don't have that 6-6 six, six presence to clean things up. Still yet to find her shooting range. Shot clock winding down. Dollinger lets it fly. Another back tap of tip by Glenn Clark in transition. Spinning shot did not get it. One of the things that this Iowa offense and this tempo and the pace, and now Kansas State finds themselves in a bit of a pickle because they are and also a huge discrepancy at the free throw line. Oh, massive. 16 of 18 on the Hawkeyes here. Gregory able to hit the right elbow. Been an aggressive play by Iowa to the rim, and they have put this King State team in some serious foul issues. Jalen Glenn fakes the pass, shoots the three, and scores. There's a little bit of a bigger lineup for Iowa, but if you're Kansas State now, you've got to find the gaps and you've got to be able to see it. A little bit of a zone look, kind of man switching. They're going to sag. They don't want to give up anything, anything deep. Shavatsi hits the three pointer. Getting a breather on the bench. Gregory to the post, leaning in, not scoring, it's her own rebound, puts it up and in. And it is contagious, and that's what you want to have, because you have other people that are willing then to go all out on every single possession. Jeff Mitty came out of that timeout, Brian, they went 1-3-1, and you've got to get to the corner. That's the job of the person in the bottom of that zone, you got to find shooters. Glenn, hits her second three. They necessarily found that shooting touch, but she's been shooting 52% from the field in the first two games. It isn't necessarily been from behind the three-point line, but an added part of her game that brings offense for the Cavs. Sonano's been quiet, six points. The state spreads the floor out. Sundell with a drive and a lean in, did not get the whistle. Now comes Barry. Aggressive. And as we said it, there's a big gap here of where Iowa has been at the line and where Kansas is at the free throw line. This is, can be a big lift for Kansas State. Wildcats have hit five of the last six. Eight, 
second, nine second differential shot clock to game clock here. In some respects, Missy, maybe not a bad shot by Gregory. Get two for one. Yeah, it could be. Here we go. But now Kansas State, if you don't get, they miss. You've got to get this rebound. No question. Clark. She has worked off this high screen of Sonano. K-State switches this time into Sonano. Down low on the post, she'll score. Absolutely. That full court pressure that they used to disrupt Wisconsin when they played them in Milwaukee, we haven't really seen that tonight. But there haven't been a lot of opportunities for the Wildcats to get that presence or off their line, off their dribble line. That's when that whistle's going to blow. State starts the second half the way they started the game, with Sh except for Shamatsi in place of Lauterbach. Clark clears. Mm -hmm. Gabby Gregory got hung up. Jeff Mitty not at all happy about it, thought it was a lot of contact. But now we see zone from Iowa. K-State's got to have that attack mentality. It's Gregory drilling the jump. That spot, that's where you got to go against the zone. Get to the middle of the floor. Great hands by Sonata. Instead, it's Glenn. And way off the mark. Clark may have been held in check. She still had 12 points, 7 boards, 5 assists in the first half. He said that she's a numbers machine. And she just continues to find a way to impact games at so many different levels. And she creates so many opportunities for herself and her teammates. Shabatsi just trying to get out of the way. One of the best in the nation. No doubt about it. A rare miss. She missed both. Eight threes for King State in the first half. They missed their first try of the second half from long distance. Dollinger, full head of steam. Back to Shabatsi. Hits another three. That's Dollinger lets it go for the lead. Offensive rebound, Sundell, and she is fouled with a put. And the sophomore, not afraid to mix it up and get herself a chance at the free throw line from the offensive glass. Also the unanimous member of the All-Big 12 freshman team. Ties the game. Keep this game now tied, 52 all, 6.38 left here in the third. Good scout by King State on the inbound, able to knock it away from Sonano. Here's Sundell in the lane for the lead. K-State has a couple of foul trouble players. Sundell misses the shot inside, wanted some contact, did not get it. Or maybe perhaps anticipating contact, missed it too long. K-State's had two chances close to the rim in this third quarter and have missed both. Clark against Sundell, spinning, shooting, scoring! Now it's a tie game, an Iowa chance to get the lead back. They've led by as many as 12. Stokey. Thought about it for a moment. Here's Clark. Stutter step. Explodes through a double team and scores. A lot of contact, no whistle. And a steal by Glenn. Sundell still down there, able to lay it in. Use that length, use their athleticism out front. And Glenn picks up another steal. Stolke's going to let go of three and hit. Her teammates have carried her to this point. Sundell in the lane. Tough shot. Couldn't get the finish. Clark the other way. Finishes on the right side. Gregory. Shamasi will just take the three. And Stolke clears the board. Stolke the biggest shot of the moment. A three-pointer. After being left wide open. How about that pass from Clark to Warlock? It was a sellout at the Knapp Center for the Drake Bulldogs. They couldn't pull the upset. But when you put 115 and 92 your last two games, this 62 seems like they're kind of maybe kind of... In the post, draws the foul against Warnock. And now no matter what, the long shooting foul. And this could be a big lift for Kansas State. Keeps this thing. Glenn left wide open. Long on the three. K-State, 2 of 8 from behind the arc in this quarter, 9 of 30 in the ballgame. Iowa not much better, 5 of 18. 11th and 12th time today. And Clark misses. Typical performance shooting the ball for Kenton Clark. But still, K-State made a pretty good run. Yes. Key factor here now for Kansas State, you've got to exploit some of these matchups. Find the open players, pull those post players. Her fifth of the game, tying her career high. Oh, 
the reaching foul. Throughout this entire fourth quarter, the last 10 minutes, you got to be aggressive. Made you pay all night long. Yep. Davis makes both. 24 are the Hawkeyes at the stripe as you see the foul jump up for King State at the end of the third quarter. Trying to find the hot hand in Shimatsu. Gregory is posted up. Slams into Warnock. Draws the foul. Down low, Warnock just caught back behind. Too much contact. And she knocks down the first. Yeah, you just got to open yourself up. I was taught very early on by a wise man. Enthused with the way that this has gone. No Ayoka Lee. Everyone thinking that King State will not be a power in the conference, and they are hanging with the number four team in the land. This is the highest AP ranking since 1994 for this Iowa Hawkeye program. We've said it time and time again, an incredibly veteran team. They've returned all five starters from last year. They've added big pieces. Right, Jasmine, what'd you hear from Jeff Biddy in that last timeout? Well, Coach Biddy was very adamant about getting stops without foul, and he wants them to try to get more blocks and leaving their feet in order to make these shots more difficult for Iowa. He's not shot the ball well from behind the yard, but fouls have been an issue for King State. They have not been able to keep from fouling and putting Iowa at the line. Sonato left open, hits the Weapons and options on the floor for this Iowa offense. Sonano with that 15-foot jumper range. She will knock it down at one of the highest percentages in the country. Sundell. Draws a foul, reset out of bounds, 20 on the shot clock. Clark driving, fouled. It's a push from below. The foul may have could have gone against Sundell. I think that was maybe when Clark's getting to the free throw line. This is what her game brings to the floor. Well, on a night, a lesson to young players. On a night when you don't shoot the ball well, get to the free throw line. Yeah. Caitlin Clark, 11 of 14 from the stripe. There is always a way for a player to impact a game, and we see Caitlin Clark do that time and time again. No matter where they play and who they play, triple-double type numbers almost each and every night. Might not be from behind the three-point line, but she's finding a way to make it happen. From nearby Frankfort, Kansas, about 35, 40 minutes northeast of Manhattan. Double team in the corner. Warnock was trying to get it back to Sonano. Now the lob. Sonano beats Shabatsing and scores. A great play. 1,850 career points in Iowa. Sundell's three off the mark. Gregory, the offensive rebound. By Gabby Gregory. Martin tried to draw the contact. Maybe get a charge. Clark making another contact. We've got to have answers each and every time now as this game goes under. Against Ebert. Clark buries two more free throws. At the free throw line is Caitlin Clark. 24, 9, and 6 for Clark. And the lead is seven. Sundell, a fake underneath, it's the foul, missed the shot, hits the line. As we said, there's got to be an answer each and every time. This is the answer for Kansas State. Unconventional point guard is Serena Sundell. Came in from Maryville, Missouri. In the free throw line where she's six of six. It's not quite the level of Caitlin Clark, but it has helped. Sundell, off the screen, to the basket for a three-point play. To tie her career high. Couldn't get it. The rebound. Sun down. Waterbach, who has range, misses the shot. Ambitious there for the junior. And Iowa the other way with Clark. Drop off for Sonano. Gregory returns. King State another chance to pull within a possession. Marquette's have not hit a three here in the fourth quarter. Gregory with a near steal. Davis kept it somehow, so way. Now Glenn steals all the way to the other end. Touchdown again. Kansas State makes a pay. And the crowd into it now. Fourth right Iowa on the road in Manhattan. Tied in the fourth. Clark. Step back three. Got it! Gregory. Driving on Warnock. Gets the foul and gets to the line. As you said, you kind of get a little bit shell-shocked. A big three by Clark. Build that confidence. Do not allow Iowa to get comfortable. 
What a night for Sundell. She was battling. There had been a mismatch and a screen. They had switched. She had Sonano inside. Heads up play right there by the sophomore. Gregory hit to the ground again. And her knee. This is where Gregory has had her success, and they got to just continue to go back to the well. Time is Coming off a 25-point game, nine boards against Wisconsin. She's a big tail player of the week. Big possession here defensively for the Cats. Students into it on the far side for K-State. A minute to go. Martin looking for Gregory to post up. Now to Sonando. Layup good. The defense, you've got to allow that front to come, and Sonano makes him pay. So Iowa takes the lead back and quiets the roar for a moment. Gregory. Working right side of the lane, steps around Davis, cut it the shot and gets to the free. And she'll miss. I, yep, I, I own that one, everybody. I own it. I own it. She makes the second to tie the game. Does this ball ever leave the hands of 22? Not if you can help it. That's how I look at it. Still got one timeout left. She could use it if she needs it, but she's going to let her use this shot clock and go one on one. Clark eyeing the clock. Wants to post up. They're going to run the same play to get Sonano isolated. And a jump ball is Grant tied up with the Hawkeye in front of the Hawkeye bench. It was Clark trying to sell the foul. If not, this thing goes to overtime, and you've put yourself in a really good position. Could it be the second straight overtime game in less than a week for Iowa? Or does King State pull off the upset? Timeout by Jeff Binning as it was during the five count. Ranking for this Iowa Hawkeye program since 1994. And you said it, they are coming off a 92-86 overtime win at Drake over the weekend. Looking to get to 4 0. The ball goes to Gregory. Driving through the lane. Ball to the ground. And a foul is called. With 4.7 seconds left. Well, now you've got opportunity here, and that's going to be Gabby Gregory at the free throw line. And this is a bit of a late call here. May have been a no call. Martin's falling down. Everybody's down. She loses, loses control of the basketball. I'll tell you what that is, Missy. What do you think of this? Mark goes down. It is a no call on the initial contact, but we saw in the rules video we saw this year, if the player flops to the ground or it's a no call, but trips up the offensive player, it that's can result the in a that's foul. That's true. That is in the list. I mean, that's on. It's on. That is part of the point of emphasis from officials. So you're right. I think because she disrupted her line of play, the hardest part about that possession right there is whether or not Gabby Gregory actually had possession of the basketball. So Gregory to the free throw line. That's a great point. Was Gregory still in possession of the ball? It doesn't matter now. She's at the line with two free throws with 4.7 left. That's the first. He stayed in front. Now, this game is far from over yes. with 22 on the court. And you're also going to see if this goes in. Neither way, Lisa Bluter's going to call timeout so they can advance the basketball. Missed the second, and there's the timeout with 3.8 left. A clean defensive possession for Kansas State right here. Do not give the officials any reason to blow that whistle. Final play of regulation. A near steal by K-State. Clark to the ground. Ward up the Sonata. Sonato as she went up for the final shot. Clark goes down near mid.